Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. It's the end of an era. Governor Andrew Cuomo said this week that he will no longer deliver daily briefings on the coronavirus. But more than three months after the first case was diagnosed in New York, people still have questions. Chief among them is the state's handling of nursing homes. At one point, New York required nursing homes to accept COVID positive patients to free up hospital beds for others. Cuomo said this week that the state was just following orders from the federal government. If they want to start with an analysis of, in retrospect, in retrospect, in retrospect, start with the first fact. Why did the federal government, federal government give that guidance to states? That's the only relevant question if you want to go down that road. That's a claim that was scrutinized this week by fact checkers. With me now to discuss that and more is Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio. Karen, thanks for being here as always. Sure thing. So Karen, PolitiFact rated the governor's claim that he was relying on the CDC guidance to force nursing homes to accept COVID positive patients as mostly false. And their reasoning is basically that the CDC really never said that. They were never forcing that standard upon the state. Um, I sent this article to you earlier in the week. I'm curious to get your take on it, since this has been something that the governor has repeated several times over the last you know, month, I would say, since we started pressuring him on that. Well, you know, Cuomo has been largely praised for his handling of the whole COVID crisis, but the nursing homes, he's drawn a lot of criticism for his handling of that. I mean, 6,000 residents died. And uh, there was this March 25th directive that the nursing homes had to take the patients. And I think the governor was fighting the last war, frankly. He was worried about what happened in Italy. The hospitals were overrun and he didn't want New York's hospitals overrun. So he wanted to clear those hospital beds any way that he could. And in retrospect, perhaps allowing these patients back was not a good idea. I mean, it goes to the larger issue of the nursing homes not being well regulated. The staff there, a lot of them are very low paid. They're vulnerable to the virus. You know, perhaps they brought in the virus as well. So it was just a very bad situation. And the CDC did say, uh, yes, it's a good idea to take these nursing home patients back, but the nursing homes have to be prepared. They have to know how to handle it and isolate the virus. And, you know, it looks like that didn't happen at all. You know, speaking of Cuomo receiving praise for his handling of the coronavirus, he said this week that he is ending his daily briefings. We've had them since March. I don't know about you, but I actually found myself a little sad that this wasn't going to be happening anymore. Yeah, hard to believe because, uh, yes, as reporters, sometimes you know, we wouldn't see the governor for months. Now we've seen him for 110 days. I think you, Dan, went to every single briefing in Albany, Just right? Just about, yeah. <laughs> I went to slightly more than half of them. And, and it's true, they kind of anchored our day. And uh, yeah, it does seem like an, an end of an era. I have to say the things that the governor was criticized for in the past, his weaknesses being very controlling. In fact, he would even tell you that he's a bit of a control freak. His reliance on just a few inner staff for all his decisions, that's what became the strengths in this crisis because you couldn't wait for a bureaucracy to move. You had to make decisions quickly. You had to pay, you know, be obsessed with detail and you had to make sure that it happened right away. So all of a sudden, all these things that were viewed as his weaknesses were his strengths and he just became the right person really to handle this crisis. I don't think there's there's too much disagreement about that. Also this week, Senate Republican leader John Flanagan, we knew that he wasn't gonna be coming back because he's not seeking reelection, but he had a surprise announcement this week that he's leaving June 28th, and that means that Republicans in the Senate are going to have to pick a new leader. Any predictions, Karen? Well, we do know that there are two Western New Yorkers in the running, Senator Patrick Gallivan, the former Erie County Sheriff, Senator Rob Ort, the former mayor of North Tonawanda. But somebody has to lead. And I think these two Western New York senators want to do it. They'll give it some more blood. I think they're a little bit more conservative, a little maybe more Trumpian, or might, let's say they might agree with some of the views of President Trump more than Senator John Flanagan, who was more of a moderate from Long Island. So that may change the tenor of what we hear coming out of the Senate Republicans in the future. All right, Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio. Always a pleasure to start the show with you. Thanks.